Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Leslie Sanders, L-E-S-L-I-E-S-A-N-D-E-R-S, pastor of Hope Presbyterian Church. On behalf of our Alderman Stephanie Coleman, let me welcome you to the 16th Ward in the largest of the Inglewood community. We are excited today about these artists, these comedians who've come, who've grown up in Chicago, but, since, but feel a sense of need to come back to our community and share and encourage our young people uh, to live a life that's successful and a life that's against nonviolence. The Bible teaches us that laughter is good for the heart. And I thank you for your heart, to having the heart to come back in this city. My faith experience says that all that ways acknowledge God, he shall direct the path. So for a moment, oh gracious God, we thank you now for this opportunity to have these artists gather in this place. We thank you, God, for their commitment to the betterment of this community. Continue to bless us and bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And with that, I'm going to turn you over to the hands of Early Walker, who chairs the I'm Telling Don't Shoot group of businessmen who are doing a great job in helping make a difference in the life of our city. Early, in your hand. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, as the pastor stated, uh, I would like to first thank Alderman Coleman, uh, who is not present here today, but definitely uh, stands behind this call. Um, and also, I want to thank the comedians behind us who have stepped forward oh, to speak out as it relates to the gun violence of our babies getting gunned down in Chicago. Uh, oftentimes, we see them on the forefront making us laugh, but this is a serious issue, and we wanted to bring and shed some light to this issue. And so I am definitely uh, uh, thrilled, and I applaud them for using their platform, you know, for the positivity. Uh, we all, all heard of uh, Ricky Smiley's daughter getting shot not too long ago, and you know that definitely hit home for everyone. I'm pretty sure it hit home for uh, these that stand behind me today. So, with that being said, we felt it necessary to bring to light and shed more light on the fact that we're tired of us killing us. We're tired of the black on black crime as it relates to our babies being gunned down. And so uh, that is one of the reasons why I started the organization I'm Telling Don't Shoot, is to bring light to this horrible, horrible uh, plague that has taken over the city of Chicago. So uh, without further ado, I do want to announce uh, or introduce, I should say, uh, Corey Bell, who is a comedian. Uh, she's actually on tour with Monique uh, currently. And when I called her and told her about this, she was actually out of town. And she, without hesitation, said, I I'm going to call everyone and do the best of my ability because I have a kid that it can possibly you know, be subject to this as well. And I want to speak out on this to bring awareness to this. So without further ado, uh, first I want to also, if everyone can give a hand of applause to these comedians for stepping forward. All right. Bell. I am uh, a Chicago comedian, but I'm also a Chicago resident. I am born and raised right on the south side of Chicago. I'm a mother of five children. I'm somebody's grandmother. I have little black boys that live in the community. I have little black girls that work in the community. And we get tired. We are tired. And I get sad for all of the little babies and all of the kids that are trying to grow up. You shouldn't have to try to grow up. You should be able to do it effortlessly. And the one thing that you shouldn't have to do is worry about whether or not you're going to live and be able to get old and grow old. Um, so I'm here today because yeah, I'm a comedian, but this is no laughing matter. We are tired of our babies dying. We are tired of innocent lives being taken. We are just tired of our community not being able to live to the fullest of its ability. Um, so I decided that I wanted to join with some of my friends, you know, who we go, come to these same neighborhoods. A lot of us live in these neighborhoods, we work in these neighborhoods, our children go to school in these neighborhoods, and we come and we perform in these same neighborhoods that we're ducking in. And we have got to be able to say, listen, put the guns down, period. We can't blame it on anybody else. We can't point out anybody else. We can't make this anybody else's problem. We can't make it the mayor's problem and the governor's problem and the police. This is our neighborhood. This is our village. 
And if this is the village that's supposed to raise these babies, we have to be first responders and be responsible. Hold the people accountable that's killing and shooting our babies and that's killing our, our family members and that's just killing each other. We can worry about all of the world's problems, but we gotta start right at our front door, yeah? Thank you so much to the pastor. And we all know that we, we got to pray. You got to have a strong foundation. But even the Bible says faith without works. That means you got to do something. And you got to do more than just post on Facebook how sad it is and sharing the videos and, you know, talking about what everybody else needs to do. You can't hold anybody else accountable until you hold yourself accountable. Because if you know something and you don't say something, you're just as guilty. something say something don't worry about everybody else's neighborhood everybody else's city worry about your block your house your front door because if it hasn't touched your front door yet if we don't get control of it it will it's not a matter of if it's a matter of will uh when and we have to start now so like i said yes i'm a comic and i make jokes about a lot of things even when we're in chicago but right now, we are dying at a rate that is unheard of. And we have got to do our part. Not that, don't worry about nobody else. Worry about you and what you can do and what you can control. So whatever it is in your power, join up, link up, find a kid. Find a kid that you know may need a little guidance. Because guess what? These are all of our babies. This is everybody's babies. When I was growing up, if I acted a fool down the street, whoever was down the street is where I got it. And then they took you home and you got it again, yeah, again. Yep. because that's the village. So we have to we have to get the village together because where there's no no respect and no trust, then there that we have nothing. So um, with that, I do have a couple of other people that I would like to speak. Um, so at this time, I am going to call one of the people who live and and know this neighborhood very well. One of my good comedian friends, Mr. Prince Ballhead. y'all doing um spell it right for b-a-l-d h-a-d <laughs> ball here but um as she said i'm from inglewood always representing inglewood doing comedy and all across the country these kids are dying my thing is you got to give these other brothers something to do you can't just tell them to put the guns down and you're not giving them nothing to put in their hands to replace the guns they need training they need resources a lot of them do want to go back to school, but they want to be in a safe situation. It's hard to change from something that you know and something that you're used to. If somebody starts shooting and a person doesn't move, that means he's used to that. And that's a sad thing. That's actually some trauma. A lot of people think that's the norm. Now, it's not the norm. And I'm one of the guys that's from it. I got shot five times right up there on, uh, on low years ago. I come from the block over. I know it from the inside out. And I hate it. But you cannot tell somebody to change just by verbally telling them to change. Community, we need block clubs back. And y'all want to go fuss with the police? Tell the police to start getting back on their feet out here. Start getting, uh, getting familiar with the community again. Get familiar. There's still, still some grandmamas around here. Yeah. There's still some people around here that you could tell. Because I remember one time I was on the corner and police rolled up on me. So I'm going to tell Miss Bates on you. And I didn't, I never was on that corner ever again. <laughs> I did move to another corner, but the, the fact of it, I'm not on that corner. However the case may be, change needs to come with something. It's not just nothing you can tell anybody further. You got to put something in these guys' hands. And a lot of these guys do want to change. But if they ain't got nothing but what they see, what you think they're going to do? Who's out? We gotta, we gotta get used to these masks, because obviously we can't stay in the house, so that ain't going nowhere anytime soon. Um, um, at this time, I would like to call one of my comedy mentors, my comedy brothers, who's also very active um, on the scene, uh, Mr. Damon Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before I get started, I just want to say, uh, 
Before we stop the violence, we're to stop the virus. So I'm going to cover that mic. Um, <laughs> knowing how news work, I'm going to be brief because they ain't going to show half of these speeches. Um, but it's, in, it's important. First of all, my son has a community center that's out here, right here on 51st and Bishop. Uh, it's called The Breathing Room. And it's, it's crazy that I have to be concerned about my son in his community or any of our communities while he's out here trying to do good and fight the power and, and uh, defund the police. Um, I have to worry about him being a, a victim of violence. Also, with the defund the police movement, they're talking about building a new police academy. How about we just do a vocational academy, as my man Paul here said. They need alternatives. Uh, if you're working, if you're employed, if you have money in your pocket, you don't have time for crime. So let's get some programs that will assist our youth and stop the violence and stop the virus. Wear your mask. All right. <laughs>